Now I'm going to walk through the process of starting with a completed circuit diagram for a sequential state machine, and then we will build out the state diagram for that machine, what it looks like. In general, if you have n flip-flops, you're going to have two to the n states. It's possible that a state might never be used, right? It can be don't care. But if you have a state that's don't care, you're going to want to make sure there's a transition out of that state in case your circuit starts in that state and it happens that your design makes the don't cares stay in that state. It's an unusual circumstance, but it can happen. So it's a good idea to make sure you have a transition out of any don't care states into some state that is part of your design. Uh, the number of inputs and states and outputs are all going to be independent of each other. You could have, you know, five inputs and two states and three outputs, or you could have one input and four states and one output. All of these things are going to be independent of each other. And what we're actually constructing is called a finite state machine or FSM. This is a machine that has a finite number of states and there are transitions that get you from one state to another. So let's start with an example um, and we're going to deconstruct this example uh, and see where how we got to this point. Uh, so this is actually an example from the textbook in figure 413 and it is confusing to look at. There's a lot going on. We've got a couple of flip-flops, but we've also got some traditional combinational logic. We've got some inputs and some outputs and some state variables. So let's just walk our way through this and see what we can find out. So first thing is, we've identified that there are two state variables, because there are two flip-flops, each of which can store one bit, which means there are four possible states. This thing could be in 0, 0, or it could be 0, 1, or it could be 1, 0, or it could be 1, 1. We've identified that there is one input, which means there are two possible input values, 0 and 1, and there is one output besides the state variables q1 and q0. The state variables, we don't have to use them as outputs, but we can, and it's nice to look at the state variables as the new value that's going to be stored in the flip-flops, um, presented by these d values that are generated from this combination of logic. So let's look at this circuit in a bit more detail and see if we can match up this original diagram that I gave you at the beginning of the sequential circuit notes to the elements that are in this circuit. Because when you finish a design, you're going to get something that looks a bit like this. It'll have different flip-flops, maybe more, maybe fewer, maybe different types. Uh, but there will be generally some combinational logic that is going to generate the next state values and some storage elements that are going to provide the current state values. So let's see if we can identify those pieces. The input clearly is this x value, and it seems to be presented to combinational logic. It's not presented to these flip-flops, it's presented to some logic which is going to make some decisions about what values to store in the flip-flops. So that's here, this brown input is inputs into the combinational circuit. And again, we know how to build combinational circuits, so that should be fine. Then we have the current state which is stored in the flip-flops as they are right now. That value is also provided to the combinational logic. See, the combinational circuit has inputs and it has also the current state as an input to the combinational circuit. It's a bit confusing because we've got inputs to the entire circuit and we've got inputs to the combinational logic, which is part of the circuit. Combinational logic needs both the inputs from the outside world and the current state of the device. So these will wrap around from the output of the flip-flops back into the combinational logic, either from positive or negative values, and they will be provided as additional values which will be used to decide what the next state of the circuit should be. The combinational logic then will generate the next state. In this case, we're just generating the value to store in these D flip-flops. Because remember, for a D flip-flop, you convert the current state into the state you want by just presenting the value you want at the input to the flip-flop. Very simple. So you use the combinational circuit to generate the next state, or in the case of JFK flip-flops, you'll generate some additional values that will be used to set the next state, and then that next state will be stored in the storage elements. And then the output is just coming again from combinational logic. This output is a function of the current state and the inputs and will be true for the entire duration of that state. So as long as the clock is changing, that value will be the same. 
Uh, when the clock changes, that means that this uh, current state will change, and that will change the value of the output. Then the combination of logic is just these gates that we've constructed, and the storage elements are strictly the D flip-flops that we're using. So in the end, when you build one of these things out from scratch, you'll find that the actual construction amounts to solving a combinational circuit problem, which we already know how to do. It's just the KMAP stuff we've done from the beginning of class. The thing that makes it challenging is using our, what will become our knowledge of these sequential storage elements to decide what the combinational logic should produce. It's going to produce the values that will cause these flip-flops to store a new state being the state that we want it to store. So what does the, um, the state diagram look like for this? So this is the end result. This will be what you are hand in when you're done one of these problems. How do we actually get to the point where we can design this? Well, let's back up one step further and see if we can discern what the state diagram would look like and therefore discern what the um, combinational logic would be to create the, um, the tables <laughs> that will be used to design this machine. So the current state is gonna act as input to the combinational logic, and the output is a function of the current state and the input. So I think this is uh, okay. Let's walk our way through it. Again, this is just more combinational logic. If we take the circuit, we can write out by writing out a copy of these uh, logical elements into the equations that would produce them, right? So the input D1 to the top flip-flop here is just the OR of these two AND gates. It's Q1, so this is Q1 or X, and it's Q0 or X, Q1 X or Q0 X. And then the input to the lower flip-flop is just Q1 prime, this Q1 prime through here, or uh, and X by itself. So D0 is Q1 prime X, D1 is QX or Q1 X or Q0 X. These are going to be the results of your combinational logic design process. And once you figure what they are, you can draw the circuits that will provide inputs to these flip-flops. We can write characteristic equations that go, instead of just saying what the thing will do, that will actually produce the next state given the current state. And for D flip-flops, it's a very simple transition. All we have to do is substitute the inputs for the flip-flops as the next state. So the next state Q T plus one will be equal to the current state Q X or the current state of this one X. And the next state of this one will just be Q1 prime X. Again, D flip-flops make this design process very simple. The characteristic equation, which again is the characteristic, is related to the characteristic table, given the inputs and the current state, what will the next state be? Then we can write the output equation, again, just copying from the circuit design into this equation. So we're going to develop these equations when we do one of these problems. When we solve it from scratch, we're going to develop these equations figure out the inputs, and then create circuitry to make them happen. So now that we know what the characteristic equations are for this uh, machine, we can use those characteristic equations to say, given a current state and an input, what will the next state be? And all we have to do is take these numbers and put them into these equations and figure out the result. So if I'm in state zero and my input is a zero, well, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, the result is 0. This is 0 prime is 1, 0, so that result is 0 as well. If I'm in state 0 <clears throat> and my input x is 0, that forces the next state to be 0. That's fairly easy. Now, what happens if I'm in state 0 and I get a 1 instead? Well, let's work through that process. If I'm in state 0 and I get a 1, well, let's see what happens. Q1 is 0, x is 1. Q0 is 0, X is 1, so this still equals 0. So if I say my input is 1 and my current state is 0, then Q1 is 0. What's Q0? <clears throat> well, Q1 is 0, Q1 prime is 1, X is 1, so this equals 1, 1 equals 1. So my next state is in fact 0, 1. I'm going to go over to this state instead. If my input is 1, my next state is 0, 1. 
And what's my output? It's going to be 0, 0. x would be 1, but x prime is 0. And the output is 0. Now I'm going to do that for every other possibility. For every state, I have to do that for as many input combinations as there are. Now there's only one input variable, which means every state is going to have two transitions out of it. If I'm in state 0, 1, and I get a 0, and if I'm in state 0, 1, and I get a 1, those are the two possibilities. Again, there's two possibilities here, and there's two possibilities here. We just have to do the math and figure out where these go. And I'm going to leave that as a process that you guys can work through, and I will give you the end result. So this is the second one, right? What we just did, if the state is 0, 0, and the input is 1, the next state is 0, 1, and the output is 0. And again, the equations will do that for us, because in the end, <laughs> the device will do that. That's the whole point of building the device, is that the circuit will produce the next state for us and store it in the flip-flops. If we go through that whole process, what we find is a diagram that looks like this. And again, it's a little complicated, but each state has two possible outputs. Uh, sorry, each state has two possible transitions caused by the input being 0 and the input being 1. And they may go to different states. They may stay in the same state. All of these things are possible. In this case, all four states are used, um, and all four states have transitioned to some other states. Most of our states go back here, right? There's lots of inputs into this state. A state can have as many inputs into it as you want. Inputs is probably the wrong word. A state can have as many transitions into it as you want but a state will only ever have as many transitions out of it as there are possible input combinations to the device itself. So that's the complete state diagram. Once we have a state diagram, we can use it to generate the circuits, the equations, and then we can draw the circuit and complete the device. How do we get the state diagram? <clears throat> Where does this information come from? If we're solving this problem from scratch, well, we solve this problem by generating a state table or a characteristic table. These are the same thing. Given the current state of the device and the inputs, what is the next state and the outputs? This table, the state table, the characteristic table, is precisely the same information as this. And maybe you can guess now that once you figure out this table, you can actually solve these equations or these truth tables as using Carnot maps to generate the circuitry that will produce the next state and the outputs given these as inputs. Given the current state and the input, what is the next state and the output? So you will have to, when you're doing the design process, generate this table. Either I'll give you the table, or I'll give you a description of what I want the device to do, or I'll give you a, a state diagram that will show you the process of from state to state, but once you get this table that says, given the current state and the inputs, what are the next state and the outputs, you'll be able to generate logic for next state for Q1, logic for next state for Q0, and the output Y. So that's the entire process. You start from a plain English description or some information about the circuit that you want to build. You're going to generate a state table. Then you're going to generate a state diagram, or perhaps you'll generate a state diagram first and then a state table. From the state table, you will solve k-maps to get these expressions. From those expressions, you will draw this circuit, and then that will generate the sequence of state transitions given a particular set of inputs. And that's the entire process.